Bismuth is number 83 on the periodic table of elements. It's metal with very unique properties and an absolutely wild crystalline structure. However, the specimens you see in the average rock shop have a terrible secret that a lot of you already know. They're not grown in nature, but in kitchens and labs. So let's talk about the hows and whys. Stay tuned. Special thanks to Joni, one of my Mineral of the Month Club members, for broaching this topic, and thank you for feeding me. She asked if I had any issue with bismuth treatments, and the short answer is, not particularly. As with any other treatment or lab growth, in this case specifically, as long as the person buying it is made just extremely well aware that it's not a natural formation, I have no problems. So let's answer the question, why? Why is it grown? and not mined in the stunning, vibrant M.C. Escheresque crystals that you know and love. And the answer is that crystalline specimens of bismuth in nature on Earth are exceptionally rare. Some people will claim that it's impossible. That's not quite true, however the conditions are very specific, and when it does occur, the native bismuth crystals are typically very small. Most bismuth that is mined today is in the form of ore bodies that have all kinds of other minerals and metals included, which also have an effect on pure bismuth crystals being able to form. There are some bismuth-bearing minerals that can form with native bismuth, like bismuthinite, which is fun to say, and is a bismuth and sulfur-bearing compound. So in short, native bismuth crystals just don't really look like what you see in the store. The growth conditions are very specific. Now for the how. How are the bismuth crystals formed, and interestingly, it's something that is in the realm of possibility for the general public. Obviously, if you decide to do this, you should do some research, as well as take as many safety precautions as possible. But here's the abridged version of how it's done. Bismuth has an incredibly low melting point, 520.56 degrees Fahrenheit, or 271 degrees centigrade. So, on something like a wood stove, in a stainless steel cooking pot, people will melt chunks of bismuth metal, scoop away impurities, and let crystals form. The longer you keep the bismuth at just under 520 degrees Fahrenheit, the bigger the crystals will form. The crystals will form from the top and sides, grow downward and inward. So people will typically break into the top of the molten bits and move them around a little bit so they don't stick to the bottom of the pot or something. Quick tip, stainless steel pot is incredibly important. If you use something like an aluminum or copper pot, they will leach and contaminate the crystals. They won't look nearly as cool. Now the color is an oxidation reaction, and what temperature the crystals are at when you expose them to the air will determine the colors. The beautiful rainbow colors people love are when the crystals are exposed to air at high temperatures. If you let the crystals get down to closer to, say, room temperature, you'll get more bronzes and purples, as it was explained to me by a gentleman that has made a business out of growing bismuth. There are a lot of tutorials floating around, but if you're young and you want to try it, obviously talk to your parents first. And regardless of age, 520.6 degrees Fahrenheit is still dangerous. So have fun, but please be safe. So, aside from really cool crystals, what is bismuth good for? Bismuth is a wonderful metal, with tons of industrial applications, cosmetic applications, and even medical ones. Most of you probably know that it's the active ingredient in Pepto-Bismol. I saw a video not too long back of somebody growing, <laughs> growing bismuth from Pepto-Bismol, which was really cool. But if you didn't, you know, there you go. It's used to make pigments for cosmetics, since it has an incredibly low toxicity level for a heavy metal, bismuth is used as a catalyst for the polymerization process, which is used to create synthetic fibers like nylon and polyester. That's pretty cool. It's also used to make rubber. I like to drive. That's fun. It has applications in electronics, fire extinguishers, and, fi and fire detection systems. It's an absolute champ of a mineral. So again, Special thanks to Joni and all of the Patreon and Mineral of the Month Club members. You make this possible, 
It's greatly appreciated. Check the description for ways you can support the channel. Smash the like button, the subscribe button as well, and let me know what you think about bismuth in the comments. Cheers. Cheers.